Hi and welcome, I'm Lisa. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me on my YouTube channel or website for another card video. Today I'm sharing several quick and simple cards. These cards are great for everyone from the person wanting to try their hand at card making for the very first time to the most seasoned card makers who just want something quick and simple. It's a great way to mass produce cards with minimal supplies. I want to take a few minutes to go over the supplies I'm using and talk a bit about them. So to start out, the first thing you'll need is pattern paper. And you can use 12 by 12 pattern paper cut down to size or six by six paper pads. The 12 by 12 pattern paper has a larger print than the six by six paper pads as you see here, but you can easily use those 12 by 12 papers. You're gonna need a paper trimmer with a wire or a bar guide. This type of paper trimmer is perfect because it allows you to make precision cuts. And since I'm cutting my frames instead of using my die cuts, we're gonna need the ability to make those precise cuts. And you won't need a paper trimmer this big. They do make a smaller version of this. I'll be using my advanced tape gun, but you can purchase small tape runners and refills. We're gonna use mounting foam that can be purchased in strips, circles, squares, sometimes variety packs. I also want to recommend a liquid adhesive for paper. So make sure it says for paper on the bottle when you purchase the liquid adhesive. And if you can find one that says dry, dries clear, that's even better. Now you can find all of these items in your local big box craft stores. If you do, be sure to shop those sales and use those coupons. If not, you can find them online at places like scrapbook.com, Ellen Hudson, A Cherry on Top, and even Simon Says Stamp. Most companies have coordinating ephemera packs and stickers, enamel dots when they come out with paper collections. When you start picking out the pattern paper collection you want to use, just make sure it has coordinating items that can be purchased. Sometimes you can pick up a 12 by 12 paper kit that will have some stickers or ephemera in that pack. And those are great for beginners. Other items I recommend but are not a must have are twine and thread. And I always recommend gold and silver thread. And of course, sequins to help us embellish. So I'm working with My Mind's Eye Winterberry Collection, and this collection is from 2018, and I wanted to use it to make room for something new. If you're a paper crafter that has a lot of paper, this is a great way to use up some of that paper. This here is the Winterberry Ephemera Pack that coordinates with my 12 by 12 papers I'm using, and it has 56 pieces in it to include some sentiments. So you could easily buy one pack of this ephemera and a six by six paper pad and create a multitude of cards. In front of me, I have laid out the papers and ephemera I'm using on this first card. It's a very clean and simple card. I'm going to cut my stripe paper to four and a quarter by five and a half inches to cover my card base. And a quick note, all of my card bases in this video are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So when it comes to picking out my paper, I really don't follow any rules. I just pick what looks pleasing to me. I do know there are some people who have a hard time with pattern paper. So here's a few things that I've read along the way. One, they say pick one pattern that's busy with either like bold prints or multicolors. This, then pick a second paper that has a smaller print and then a third paper that's a neutral. So it could be a monochromatic with a print on it or even a, a piece of paper that looks distressed or something like that. One thing I do want to say is that these paper companies work really hard to pull these patterns together for us. So if you buy a paper pad or a kit, you really shouldn't have too many problems matching these papers up because the companies take all the guesswork out of it. Another thing, don't fuss too much over it because when you fuss over it, the, pay, uh, the greater the chance that you're going to become th frustrated and you're just going to walk away from it. And remember, this is supposed to be fun and relaxed. So just go with your gut. So I've went ahead and adhered that striped paper to my card base. I cut that black pattern paper down to fit behind that frame. And now I'm adding my ephemera pieces with liquid adhesive. And then we're just going to add some coordinating enamel dots. And we have our first card done. 
super simple. For the next card, we're going to be doing a gatefold card. So I wanted to show you a few different types of cards that you can easily create while doing this. So, and a gatefold is very easy to create. You're gonna take an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of cardstock, and you're gonna cut it down to five and a half inches high by eight and a half inches wide. Pretty much you're gonna cut it in half. So then you're gonna score at two and one eighth of an inch, and then again at six and three eighths of an inch to create the gate. So knowing that our gates are two and one eighth of an inch wide, I'm going to cut two panels from my pattern paper to two and one sixteenth of an inch by five and seven sixteenths of an inch. You're gonna add adhesive to the back of each panel and center that on the gates of the card. I'm using the December 25 on the front and I'm going to add twine to the back of it. So I add some adhesive and then I let that twine just loop around on itself and adhere to the adhesive. I'm going to add some dimension to the card by adding mount, mounting foam, oh, excuse me, to the back of that December 25 and then I'm going to cover that with a trimmed piece of green cardstock from my scrap stash. We're gonna add two pieces of adhesive to that green card stock and then adhere it to the right gate of our card. Make sure your adhesive does not touch the left gate. It will tape your card shut. We're gonna finish this off with a few enamel dots. So I decided to do a shaker card and don't be intimidated by shaker cards. They're super simple. And for the sake of transparency, the candy cane and wood pattern paper came from another paper collection, but I wanted you to see how you can mix and match the collections. I cut the candy cane paper to four and a quarter by five and a half to cover the card base. I cut the wood pattern to three and a half inches wide by four inches high, and then create a frame with that third paper and our paper trimmer. So we're going to adhere the candy cane paper to the card base, center the wood pattern paper on the card base, and adhere a piece of trimmed acetate to the back of the frame. And you can use a clear packaging from stamps, dies, your ephemera pack. You don't need to buy acetate to make one shaker card. Add foam strips to the acetate and be careful to not leave any gaps between the foam. Lay down a pile of sequins on the wood and then center that acetate frame over the sequins and wood paper, pressing firmly, making sure no sequins are caught under the foam. You should be able to give it a good shake and sequins should not go flying everywhere. So then just center the candy canes on the acetate with the Christmas using mounting foam. We're gonna finish this off with three small white enamel dots from the Winterberry Coordinating Enamel Dot Pack. So, super easy cards to create with minimal supplies. I absolutely love creating cards like this. So here's a quick look at all the cards I created using the Winterberry 12 by 12 papers and coordinating ephemera and enamel dots. So I showed you how to do three of these cards just to save some time, but the concept is pretty much the same. Um, just sit down and have fun with it. That's, that's the biggest tip I can give you is just let your mind free and just have fun with this. Okay, so I do believe that's a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed joining me and that you were inspired enough to head into your crafty space and create something amazing today. I do hope you'll hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of new content to my channel. And if you could hit that like button, that would be awesome. I want to encourage you to leave any comments or suggestions below. Also, be sure to subscribe to my website where you can find videos and blog posts in one spot. As always, know I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and until next time, my crafty friends, keep crafting.